did it for me was The Brothers, in which I played a lady who ran an, a freight airline and ran an airfield, which in those days was unheard of. It was a real sort of trailblazer, and I was very lucky to get that part. Um, it was, it, it really did it for me. Then that was followed by Triangle, which was not a success because of BBC trying to economise, although I was the leading lady. Um, and um, then obviously I did, uh, I've done thousands of other televisions, you know, list as long as you're on. Um, and Doctor Who then sort of came my way. And then I went to Hollywood and then I came back and did Howard's Way and various other things, Bad Girls and one thing and another. But um, it's, it, those two parts, um, in The Brothers, she was called Jane Maxwell, and, and the one in Howard's Way, Laura Wilde, they were the, the, the two that were most, the audience seemed to appreciate most. I was thinking about the part you were talking about playing a woman who um, was running an airline, and I remember that, and thinking there weren't actually role models like that at that time. No. And in many ways there aren't now. There aren't that many women who hit that level. There is still a glass thing. Well, you know, the part was originally written for a man. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. And, um, and then they said, wouldn't it be a good idea? if we had a woman instead. And they wanted a tall blonde. Well, as you can see, I'm a short <coughs> person. At that time, I was a brunette. I've only recently gone white. Um, that's something that happened last year, and I decided to go with it. Um, but at the time, as you could like that movie, um, I was a short brunette. and I. But I persuaded them that I could play it, because when I went to meet the producer and the director, they said they got quite excited. They'd seen me in something called Spy Trap, um, in which I played an Italian or something, and and the the, the head of <coughs> drama had got you know thought I was quite good news, and um, anyway they 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 said now how tall are you? And I said here's a picture of me with Roger Moore, and here's a picture of me with Peter O'Toole, both of whom were six foot three or six foot four. Uh, Roger six foot four I think, and they said oh yes yes. Uh, stand up, stand up. I thought, oh, blast. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I am only five foot four. And, um, but they said, um, here's, here's a uh, script of her first episode. And I looked at it and I said, yep, I can handle that. <laughs> and I just threw it back at them across the desk. So I, unwittingly, I was behaving like the, the part. I remember there was something called Men of Affairs with um, Warren Mitchell and Brian Ricks and I remember knocking at a door and Brian Ricks opening the door and I was clad in black tights and a black leather sort of, not much really, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> and, um, and you know, and a lot of hair of course and, um, and Brian Ricks said to me, who are you? I said, I am Tanya Lentz your contact. <laughs> he said, our contact lens. I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Baker and I, I think, both joined the cast of the brothers round about the same time, because there was a terrible fight over billing. <laughs> we used to have to take alternate billing each week. He would get first billing, and then the next week I would get first billing. But Colin was very patronising to me when I turned up in in Doctor Who. Uh, he said, Omara, oh, fancy seeing you again. You know, always call me Omara. Um, fancy seeing you again. Uh, and between the lines was, I'm the star of the show now. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just a guest, darling. And, uh, but then, you know, I adore Colin. He's the most lovely man. And I, I enjoyed very much um, playing my scenes with him. He was not at all pleased when I regenerated him into Sylvester McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't want to shoot the scenes. <laughs> anyway, doubtless I shall see him at the celebrations um, on the 22nd of November at Excel. Hopefully I will, because I'm very, very fond of Colin. He's a darling, and he expressed a wish that he'd kept his figure like I'd kept mine. You <laughs> <laughs> returned again with Sylvester McCoy, and you've morphed into Bonnie Lamford. How do you feel about playing Bonnie Lamford? Oh, well, I was appalled when I heard that I had to play. I'm very fond of Bonnie. She's the most lovely girl. I absolutely adore her, um, and I know her well. Uh, but, you know, to have to imitate somebody 
whom you look nothing like. Um, and at that time, I still had my, my brown hair, and I had to wear a red wig, and I had to try and imitate her walk, imitate her voice. And I only just recently saw the episode uh, a, a short while ago, and I was, I, you know, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Um, I thought, actually, I pulled it off quite well, but uh, everyone seems to think it's hilarious. And I saw Bonnie the other day, and I said, I'm sorry, darling, what did I think I was doing? She said, no, no, she said, I thought it was brilliant, I thought it was brilliant. But um, it was, it's quite an undertaking to imitate somebody, particularly when they're there, yeah. on the set yeah. with you. If they're not there, it's not so bad, because you can then feel free. But I felt very, you know, and trying to imitate a little jaunty walk and everything. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen the episode or not, but it's, it's very funny. You played Marlene Dietrich on stage a few yeah. years ago. And it was an awesome performance. You were amazing. Your legs just went on forever. <laughs> and did, was that something you relished, doing the singing, the dancing? And also, were there other sort of female icons that you would love to play? Well, I have to say, I saw Marlena um, in the flesh uh, in Birmingham in about 1974, I think it was. Um, and I just thought she was fantastic. She was just wonderful. And, and now that my hair has, has gone the right colour, I won't even have to wear a wig next time I do it. But, um, um, you know, I just have such admiration for a woman like that who was, she was an extraordinary woman. Um, to Remember, she was German, but she said, I don't ag agree with what's happening in Germany, and I am going on to the other side. Now, I don't think I personally could do that, because I would want to remain true to my country. Um, but she was so appalled, and remember her, her sister was married to uh, the man who was something to do with um, Auschwitz. Was it? No, Belson, Belson, sorry. And um, she just renounced her country and went over, to, came over to the Allies. And it takes a lot of courage to do that. Um, to, you know, but she was such a terrific performer. She was so magnetic. Um, I, I, I just couldn't, oh, I couldn't believe it when I saw her. I very nearly met her, I didn't quite meet her, but I was in the same room, I was invited up to her suite, and but of course it was packed at the, the hotel and everything afterwards, and I, I managed to catch her eye, and I said, I think you're wonderful! <laughs> I did a, the first episode of something called Pathfinders, which was all about the RAF, with Robert Urquhart, who was in that movie actually, mm -hmm. lovely man, and Jack Watling, and um, Christopher Casno, bless his heart, and uh, Bill Marlowe, both played my boyfriends in it, and uh, when we finished filming for the day, I said, oh, look, we've got to go up to the restaurant now and get a job. She said, what? I said, yes, we go up to the restaurant, we get a job. So, you know, take your makeup off and, and make yourself look normal. And, and up we go. And, we, and they, they thought I was mad. We walked up to the restaurant, and as soon as I got in there, someone said, Kate, Kate, um, listen, uh, what are you doing at the moment? I said, you see? And <laughs> because... You see, they, the producers and directors have been looking through copies of Spotlight, seeing who can we have for this part, and then they see the real person. So I suppose it's called networking. For an actor who wants to work in TV, well, you've just got to have your wits about you, know the lines upside down. Adrienne Corrie, a lovely actress, once said to me years ago, when I first worked with her about 1957 or 8, um, she said, because uh, obviously she's just that much older than I am, she said, know the lines, know the lines until they're coming out of your ears. And she was absolutely right. I think a round of applause for that yeah. really <laughs>